This is a video about Magic Lantern software. It is custom firmware for your Canon DSLRs. Now, I kn I've known it's been out there for several years. Uh, it's only recently that I thought, well, I should take some time and explore. It's gotten a lot more polished. It's something that I get questions about occasionally, maybe with a little bit greater frequency in the recent months. And I thought, let's check it out. This is gonna be just kind of a real basic overview and a list of the features that I found um, that I really enjoy that Magic Lantern offers over just running the common firmware. Now, it sounds a little scary to run custom firmware on your camera, but you use it, you run it through the SD card. It's not, there always needs to be a disclaimer that yes, this could be voiding your warranty. Uh, certainly if you sent it in to Canon with the SD card in running Magic Lantern, they could say, nope, you voided your warranty because it does explicitly say in terms of service, you are not to install or any other firmware, but you don't really install it in the camera. It pretty much runs off the SD card. Uh, and certainly if your camera is out of warranty, it doesn't really matter. I have never heard of anybody breaking their camera using Magic Lantern, but whenever you're doing something and fiddling around at this level, it's always a possibility. So keep that in mind. But it is quite easy. You go to the website, you find the model you're running, you make sure the firmware you're currently running is the firmware that the Magic Lantern is provided for, download it to a clean SD card, put it into your camera and turn your camera on. If you want, if you're interested in hearing more about it after this video, just let me know and I can certainly do some walkthroughs and setups. I've successfully been using it on a T5i and a 5D Mark III. 5D Mark III is the nightly build, so it's supposed to be a little bit more unstable, but really it's been working just fine. So let's run through some of the features that I love. Uh, I've got six of my favorite features. That number is a little loose because some are um, kind of an overlap. One of the first features that I want to talk about is the overlays available to you. Now, you have overlays in Live View already through your current Canon software, usually a 3x9 grid. The 5D Mark III also offers a 6x4 and a 3x3 diagonal. The 3x3 is nice. It just kind of helps you set up for your um, shots, remembering your rule of thirds, kind of placing people on those intersecting lines, not splitting your horizon right down the middle, but on one of those thirds. Those are gonna make for stronger images. But if you wanna take it a step further, Magic Lantern offers a bunch more overlays. One that I found to be really helpful sometimes, especially in setting up video shots. If I go into pressing the delete button on the uh, 5D Mark III, brings up the Magic Lantern software menu. And I'm just gonna scroll through the top and show you all of the options very quickly. And out at the end, it develops this quick menu that shows you all of the things that you've changed from their default setting because there are so many different places to change so many different little tweaks with Magic Lantern that it's nice that they create on the fly as you go this little menu out at the end. And one of the options that I have in here is crop marks. And I can go into crop marks by pressing Q and you can see that there's five different bitmaps and uh, that come along with the Magic Lantern software. And one of them is this golden ratio overlay. It's this kind of little swirl spiral. It refers to the Fibonacci sequence and it is just a really nice way to compose your images using that as a guideline. But there are others in there. Notice I'm currently using the one for video. It is uh, sized for a 16 by nine resolution. But if I press on this and I can go to the right on the dial, I can choose some of the other bitmaps that they have available for you there. But um, I like the little golden ratio for video. It's, it helps to set up for video shots. The neat thing about these bitmaps is that they are customizable and you could insert your own. Is there certain types of shots that you need to get and are there framing marks that you can give yourself that will help you set up for those shots, photo or video? You can make them, you can load them into the SD card, and then they'll come up here as an option. Pressing Q again brings you back um, to that. So that was the crop marks and the overlay. That's the first thing uh, that I found that I really like that Magic Lantern offers. It may seem small, but it's nice to be able to have that option. The next feature that I really like is magnification. Now, when you're shooting video on any of the Canon DSLRs that I know of, when you magnify for focus, 
That's helpful. But as soon as you start recording, it would be really nice if you could stay zoomed in while you're recording. There are other cameras that allow you to do this. DSLRs from Canon do not, unless you're running Magic Lantern. So if I come up to the um, option right here on this quick menu, Magic Zoom, and I'm gonna press Q, and I have a couple different options. One, I can say that it's always on. I can say what size this zoom box should be and where it should be and what magnification level, three to one right now, and whether how I want that focus confirmation to look. Let me press this um, button right now. And you can see that there's no display here that is uh, special to Magic Lantern. If I cycle through my info displays though, it goes through all of the different displays until I get to the Magic Lantern. There is that golden ratio displayed on the screen. There is, um, well, the audio peaking bars you can see as I'm talking, um, and a couple other features that we'll get to in a second. But notice that bottom down here in the bottom left corner is the small box that magnifies whatever um, my crosshairs or my selection target is on. Notice that the overlay does not appear in there. It's only that. So if we come over here to the camera that's recording us, and we pick just a bit of it, you can see that it's much more magnified and I can manually focus and I could also hit record. And so now we're recording and that box stays and notice that it gets a little green line at the top when I do hit the recording correctly. It's not perfect uh, because it seems to be looking at a slightly larger spot than you are at times. But notice that I've got that split screen view as well that allows me um, to judge not only with my own eyes, but the camera as well, whether or not it thinks it's in focus. I'm gonna stop this. I'm gonna go back into that menu. I'm gonna go into Q here. I'm gonna take this from small to large. And I'm gonna take that three down to two. And let's change this to just green bars. And always on still. Uh, now we come back in here and we can see that that magnification takes up a much larger area. This can make for framing your subjects and judging your entire frame more difficult since you have this big box in the way, but it can be very useful for some shots. And I went from small to large, so you could certainly try medium, but there it is and you can see out of focus and then the green bar in focus as it is. And I could make it come away when I perhaps press the shutter button to judge my uh, whether or not it's clear. Oh, right, I did do that. I have set all of the overlays to go away when I half press the button. So I can press record and I'm recording. That screen is still there. I can half press the shutter to make it all go away, check my composition, let go of the shutter to see it all come back and check my focus. Really kind of dial in the camera the way you want. Yes, it's sad that Canon hasn't given us all of these features and it takes a third party to do it, but it's nice that there's a third party out there doing it and giving us these options. The next feature I want to talk about, talk about overlays, magnification, intervalometer. I'm actually going to lump two of these together. That's why I said this number is a little blurry. Built in to the Magic Lantern software is the intervalometer. It's the ability to say every X number of seconds, minutes, or hours, I want you to take a picture. You don't need an intervalometer. You don't need that nifty trigger trap thing that I've reviewed recently. You just simply need the Magic Lantern software running on here. That's pretty slick. And I'm going to go into the menu and I'm going to come across the top to find it. Here it is under shoot, intervalometer, press the Q key, and I can say I could take a picture every 10 seconds, start the trigger after I leave the menu, or half shutter, or take a picture. Really, you can dial it in. This is polished software. It works. And again, this is running the nightly build, but it really works. Notice you also have, I'll just mention it here quickly, you have motion detect. It's gonna drain the battery because the camera's brain is going to be on and watching, but you can have it take a picture when the frame changes from what it currently is pointed at when you turn motion detecting on. All right, so that's the intervalometer, and what you'll get out of that is a series of pictures that you can then bring back to your computer and sandwich together in some kind of software. But you can also, this is very slick, you can change the frame rate. You can force the frame rate during video to be something very different. Normally, I shoot my videos at 24 frames a second and they play back and we get good motion and it looks cinematic to some degree. But with Magic Lantern software, I could say, run this at two frames a second. That's gonna allow it to shoot at one or two or three frames a second 
and that's going to create a movie file for you. So you won't have to deal with a series of images that you bring back to the computer, put together in some software, export out. You're simply going to get a movie file out of it just like you were shooting a movie, but it's going to look like a time lapse if you're shooting it down at that one or two frames a second. Think about one frame a second is basically is the same as shooting a picture every second. So that's really neat and that's all here in the movie mode. You can come down here to FPS override and you can say, oops, your desired frames per second. You can come from 24 all the way down to, or you can actually do halves. And so you could go even slower, uh, a much slower frame rate. And again, that's gonna give you a video file. Useful, it's debatable, certainly in some situations where you don't wanna have to deal with putting it all together after the fact. Uh, it can be done. It's going to drain your battery more and Magic Lantern does have a little bit of an impact on battery life it seems. Uh, but that brings me to my next point and that is just the general overlays on the screen are really helpful. I talked about putting that golden ratio there but you also have your temperature. You have a clear indication of exactly how much space is left on the card. If you're shooting video it still counts down the number of pictures remaining and that is not always a great indicator. But if you're shooting, uh, if you're shooting video and you have the actual gigabytes remaining, that can be very helpful. Now in the bottom right corner though is a battery percentage indicator. So typically the uh, Canon icons have three different modes, full, two thirds, one third, and then it's dead. Now we have a clear percentage indicator of where this battery is and I found it to be quite accurate and it, you know, satisfied for me the fact that when you start getting a blinking red battery, you have about 10% left. And sometimes that's plenty enough to finish what you're doing so you don't have to freak out. So being able to actually see the individual percentage of your battery is really nice. And the other screens there as well, including the temperature of the camera, just gives you an idea whether or not you may be suffering from any kind of heat issues on longer videos or time lapses and things, or longer exposures, things like that. Another feature that I really like has to do with video I'm gonna go back into the menu and that's under movie tweaks. Now I use these cameras to shoot my podcast with and the podcast is almost always more than 29 minutes and 59 seconds. That is the recording limit of all of these DSLRs typically. But by using Magic Lantern software, you can't get rid of that completely, but you can say automatic movie restart. That means as soon as the movie stops, it will start again. There is about a half to maybe a full second delay as it stops and restarts. But that's a pretty minor blip. And for me not to have to worry or think about it at all, I'm just usually running a camera too and make sure that I start it slightly lagged so that they don't overlap at their start stop points at the same time. And then I don't have to worry. In the old days, which a couple months ago before I was running Magic Lantern software, I'd have to carefully watch, make sure I hit the restart button when it got up to 29 minutes and 59 seconds. And sometimes I didn't do that and it kind of cre it created some, kind of, uh, some editing hassle after the fact. And the last feature that I want to talk about is just the general customizability. I think you've been getting that, uh, that idea as we've gone through this menu here and uh, the entire bits that you have available to you. Uh, and I'm just going to go through them again and mention this last one is what I'm curious to practice with and, and ex explore a little bit more. And it's this kind of follow focus and focus endpoints that you can set up. I believe that gives you some types of indicators in live view uh, of where your front and back focus is if you're trying to do a nice cinematic pull focus, pull focus, pull focus from point A to point B. Again, when you're not using Magic Lantern, you just have to eyeball all of that. If you're recording video, you don't get any kind of magnification. With, but with the magnification and this together, I think that will allow a nice feature. Now, one of the things that I haven't talked about at all, and it's one that most serious videographers are most excited about, is the ability to shoot raw video, where it is actually creating DNG, small raw files, they're not that small, uh, that you can then pull together and run back at 24 frames a second. It gives you a much, much better detailed picture that you have a lot of control over. Shooting video in general out of these DSLRs is very JPEG-like. You don't have a lot of control over your uh, exposure. You got to get it right out of the camera. There are some profiles you can run that make it a little bit better to give you a little bit more freedom. Um, but 
it's still rough. So being able to shoot raw is excellent. I haven't played around with it too much yet because this is good enough for me now, but it will be nice to uh, explore that some more in the future. And it's all free. These are all free features that add to the robustness uh, and feature set of your camera. So that's great. So this was just kind of a quick overview look at Magic Lantern. If you're curious about hearing more, if you're a Canon shooter, you have a T5i, yes, all of these features except for the RAW. Actually, I think the, Mag the uh, RAW video is also possible on the T5i as well. Um, let me know, leave a comment right down below. If you're already using it and there's some features you love, I'd love to hear them from, hear about them from you. If you found this video helpful, hit the thumbs up, please. That's a quick way to like me. And if you're watching this and you haven't subscribed, take a moment to subscribe, especially if you're interested in hearing more Magic Lantern, because I do have a feeling I will be talking about it more as I use it more. But I just wanted to share a few moments with you right now. Thanks so much for watching. Goodbye.